Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm bringing a new series to the channel where I take a render that you guys have sent in and I give it a makeover, whether that's lighting, texturing, scene setup, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to try my best to kind of help to give you advice on how you can improve your renders. So I'm just going to jump straight into today's render makeover. So I had this render sent in by a follower on Instagram and alongside this they also sent me this reference of how they want the render to look. So you can see the difference between the two at the moment. Um, the one they have sent in, the lighting is quite flat. Uh, you're not picking up on the nice reflections in the chrome of the knife that this render has here. Um, they've also got a nice embossing uh, or deboss into the knife here. So. We're going to cover a few things in here, uh, lighting, texturing and just scene setup in general and hopefully you guys will learn something from this and what I'm going to do at the end of this video is give the new project file back to uh, the dude that sent me in his render. So if you guys want to get involved I usually leave my email in the description down below. Uh, send over your project file. I am going to be rendering with Redshift. Um, but I think you can kind of transfer these skills and techniques across to whatever render engine you are using. So I'm just going to create a new file. Um, this is the project file he sent me, which I think might be a bit different from the render he sent me. But um, yeah, you kind of get the basic idea. So I'm just going to go file new. Um, and I have actually created a vector file based off the shape of the knife he sent me. And I've just saved this out as an Illustrator 8 version which means I can go to File, Merge Project, uh, Knife Spline, and hit OK. So now we have this knife spline in our scene. Now, one of the first things from the project file he sent me in uh, was that the knife is, if I change this to size, 500 centimeters by 100 centimeters. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know a knife uh, that is that big. So the first thing I would do is just make sure that it's to scale. So I've got this at about 40 by 7, which is still too big. So I'm just going to change my size type to scale and just put 0.5 for all of these. Uh, put it back to size and now I know this is about 19 by 3. Uh, that still might not be 100% correct, but it's a lot more realistic than um, the size we had before. So I'm going to start off by putting this into an extrude. Uh, that's way too big. So we're just going to drop down the offset to maybe like one centimeter, even that's probably too much. I'm going back to the reference he sent me because we want to try to get as close to this as possible. Uh, and it doesn't really look that thick. So maybe we can drop this down to 0 0.5, uh, maybe even a little bit lower, 0 0.3, something around that. Cool. So it's got a bit of thickness. Uh, another thing I noticed from the project file he sent me, um, was that it doesn't have any beveling on these corners which means you're not going to get any nice reflections like the example he sent me where you can kind of see how it's the light is capturing those edges there um, you really want to add bevel to any kind of object that you make uh, there's no surface in real life that is completely sharp it always has a tiny bit of bevel to it uh, so we can just go into the caps on our extrude and just round these off uh, ever so slightly even just oh well even just something subtle like this um, will really help for us to pick up on those reflections. Okay, cool. So I don't want to dive into the texturing straight away. What I actually want to do is get this scene set up. So I'm going to drop in a plane. Uh, we can scale this down. And I'm actually going to put a bend deformer on this. So I'm going to drop that as a child. And I'm just going to drop both of these into my scene now here. Uh, okay, cool. So we've got our bend and I'm going to press fit to parent and just increase that size, the uh, Y size, and just put the strength for this to 90 degrees and scale it down and then also rotate it uh, like so. So now we've got this bent backdrop uh, and I'm just going to rotate the, the bend like this. And at the moment it's not so smooth. So what we need to do is just increase the height segments on our plane and just move this bend back a bit and also just increase the Y. So now it's a bit of a smoother bend. Then we can scale it down pressing T. And let's just increase the height on our plane and the width as well. So now we've got this nice curved backdrop. I can probably scale up the bend a little bit just so it's a bit more smooth. 
and this is just going to give us a nice smooth um, plane like we can see here it hasn't got any harsh shadows it kind of just fades out nicely um, which is going to be the basic kind of setup for this scene so I'm going to get this knife into place so maybe just rotate it 90 degrees and let's just lay this flat on the ground so I'm going to come into my front view and just drop this down here Cool. Uh, I'm just going to set this up so we're in Redshift. I've got everything. I think everything's good. Yeah, all looks, looks good to me. Uh, let's set up a camera. So I'm just going to go standard Redshift camera. And we're going to change this to a portrait lens. And I'm actually just going to make this square just for Instagram's sake. Uh, 1080 by 1080. Cool. And let's set this up. So let's give it a nice kind of like three quarter angle like this. And if I just press play, uh, we're not going to be able to tell too much. But if I just drop in a dome light and let's go for a really basic studio light, which I'm using from HDRI Haven, take the saturation out and let's just rotate this and see what we can get. So something like this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm just going to keep checking back to the original reference they sent. I'm not completely trying to replicate this, but I'm just trying to pick up on the key properties of this, so like the texture and the reflections. I think this angle is quite nice, so maybe we can zoom in our camera a bit more. Maybe use a tele lens, which is going to give us that kind of more graphical look, uh, something like this. And uh, yeah, this looks pretty cool. So. Got a really basic lighting setup. Uh, you can already see how we're starting to catch the light on the edges of this knife because we've put that bevel on. And maybe we can just increase that a tiny bit, maybe to like 0 0.03. Uh, and that's just going to make that more prominent. And that looks really nice. So I don't know. I think that the knife tapers at the edges. Uh, I'm not really concerned about getting that perfect at the moment because. That's something that you could go in and tweak afterwards. I, I really want to focus on the lighting and the texturing in this in this case. So let's get the texturing onto this. So I believe he used uh, this brushed steel texture, uh, which at the moment isn't looking too great. Uh, the reason for this, if I was to focus on the project file he sent me in particular, is that he's got a tiny area light uh, lighting the scene. Now, if we were to actually light this scene in real life, uh, they would either have it in kind of like a studio setup where they had big soft boxes around the object uh, or they would just set it up inside a house uh, using natural light to light this. Um, in this situation, I don't know, I think this might be like an actual photograph which they've just kind of put on a simple backdrop. Uh, there's nothing really too fancy going on here. Uh, but you can see in this image, uh, they've just placed it near a window, near some natural light. Um, so using the studio HDR, which I've used in the scene I just made, um, it's just going to help give us that real like photo realistic look because it's built on the basis of using soft boxes in a studio environment. Um, so let's start texturing this. So I'm going to go to create redshift material material and just drop that straight onto our knife. Uh, I should probably save this. I'm just going to go over that one, which I tried to do before. And I'm going to set this material to the aluminium preset. Hit play. Uh, and we can already see the lights picking up on those beveled edges. And we're getting these really nice reflections down here. At the moment, we're not getting anything on the top. Um, we may have to tweak with this HDR slightly. Uh, so maybe let's just try do that quickly. So if we rotate this around you can see changing this HDR we can start to get some really nice reflections on the top here and this nice light around the side here uh, but what I actually preferred, I preferred this general lighting look with the shadows here so what we're going to do to fill in these reflections on the top is use some area lights so I'm going to come up to redshift light area light and what we can actually do is right click on our light press animation tags target and set the knife as the target for the light, which means if I just uh, come out of the camera and I take this light, start as it's way too big, so we're just going to scale it down. And wherever I move this light, it's going to focus towards the knife. Now, at the moment, it's lighting the backdrop, and that's not really what we want. 
So we're going to go into project, press include and drop the knife into that. So now it's only affecting the knife, it's not going to affect the backdrop we have. I'm just going to set this to constant shading so I can actually see what's going on and maybe just hide the camera because it's a bit distracting. So we can use this area light here to start adding some detail to this knife, um, just bringing in some reflections in it. And at the moment, this looks pretty good. Uh, if we use a harsher angle on the light, that's going to help us to pick up on the details later on. Um, we're at the moment, we're just trying to find the right angle. So if we were to turn off this, we can see that the light is coming from the top left, and that's why it's casting shadows to the bottom right. So it would make sense for us to kind of follow that direction. So if I put a light behind it, um, something like this uh, looks pretty good. Cool, so I might actually just increase the dome light. So put the exposure up to like one and then maybe drop this area light down a little bit. And what I'm actually gonna do is put a texture into the area light. So I'm gonna come into my uh, spotlights and flat to. So you can see that's plugged in a softbox texture, which just means we're gonna get more detail in our reflections. Uh, it's the little details like this, which are really gonna help to make or break the render for you. Um, if I was to turn down the spread, you're going to pick up a lot more of those details in the reflection, um, which should help a lot as well. If I turn off the area light, uh, the dome light, you can start to see the texture from that area light starting to appear in the reflections of the knife, which is quite nice. And this is looking pretty good so far. So we could probably tweak with this a little bit. Um, I'm not going to play with it too much. I'm going to maybe bring it forward a little bit. Uh, you can start to see the cut off there where the softbox has ended. Uh, that's because we've turned the spread down. If I turned it all the way up, it will diffuse it a bit more. Uh, maybe we could turn it up a little bit just to fade it out. And we're getting some nice color variation as well, which is coming from the texture of the softbox. I think we're going to tweak with the light a little bit just to give it a more kind of uniform reflection. Uh, so I'm just going to set this to the camera. Uh, jump out the camera and let's just tweak with this a little bit. So I think we could probably bring it up Maybe bring it across Until we get the look that we want We bring up the exposure a little bit So we got one this end and I'm just gonna control and drag and we'll set another one at this end as well just so we've got a bit of variation and I'm going to set this at the back here drop this down and drop the exposure down way down okay cool so now we've got a nice reflection on the left and we've got a reflection on the right as well so probably bump up this one maybe a little bit I'll bring it in. Cool, so now we've got some really nice reflections going on and we've got a wow lit backdrop as well. Um, and let's just start adding more detail to this texture. So originally we got given um, just a brushed, a brushed steel texture, if I can find it, uh, this one here. And it's okay, but it's not the best texture. Uh, what I've done is gone to CCO Textures here and I've just found this metal texture. Uh, CCO Textures is a great website for free textures. Um, you can use them for personal, commercial use, whatever you like. And I've just downloaded like a low 2K image just for the sake of rendering. And along with that, it gives you like all different textures for different parts of the material. So we got the diffuse, We've got displacement, uh, we've got normal, and we've got roughness. So we could actually take this roughness map here and use this to drive the reflection roughness. So I'm going to plug this into the material if I can drag it. Uh, reflection roughness, and you can start to see we get that brush steel texture come in. Uh, straight away it looks a bit too big so I'm just going to increase the scale to 2 on both of those. It's taken out the shine of the aluminium so what we're going to do is add a ramp to this and plug that in between the texture and the material 
and we can start to play with these values here to start to bring in uh, the reflection back on our knife. So you can see as we drag that black slider in, we're starting to get harsher shadows, but still picking up on this brush steel look here. And if I brought the white up, uh, we can start to soften it. Only problem now is we're getting really harsh reflections based on the image. So we just want to soften this back up. So we can bring these values back down so it softens the texture. Um, and just tweak with these colors so that it's more of a subtle uh, a subtle imperfection as opposed to being like a really prominent texture. So let's just drop these down. As we lower the values, um, if I was to plug this texture back in, we're now getting these really dark texture, which has given us a really nice kind of soft, soft shadow here where you just start to see the brush steel in the parts which have reflections. Um, what we probably want to do is actually just bring this up, so make it more of like a a lighter texture, which is going to help to make it a tiny bit more prominent, uh, as well as soften it out a bit. So let's bring maybe that back up to 60. This is starting to look a bit more like it. This is going to be a case now of just tweaking these textures to uh, get the result you're after. So maybe like 30. And there's another thing we can do to just help to tone this down. And um, what we could actually do is type in uh, color layer, I believe it is, or no, color mix. Um, and what we can do is plug this material into the input two, leave the input one as white, and then plug this into the reflection roughness. And that's gonna go straight back to the default we had. So you want the input one, that's gonna be kind of the basic roughness. Uh, black is no roughness whatsoever. And white is like as if you set a roughness to one. So you kind of want to use this color to drive what you want the roughness to be. So if we were to set this to like 60, we're kind of getting it back to that default texture we had. Um, I think 25, I think, yeah, maybe around, let's see. If I was to unplug this and we can see the difference, yes, yeah, so I think we had a tiny bit more roughness, so maybe something like 60. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe something like 55. And let's unplug this. Yeah, and now we're getting now we're getting the exact same result we had. So now all we have to do is just increase the mix amount on our texture. And we can start to creep in that brush steel um, texture in there. So what we've done here is we have taken this color. So this gray color, which is now driving the roughness value. Instead of it being a number, we're using a color of black to white. And then we're plugging in our texture into input two, and then mixing it just to help bringing the detail of that texture into the roughness without the texture driving the roughness solely by, it, solely by itself. Okay, so that's looking pretty good already. Um, obviously you can tweak all these to get them to look as good as you want. Uh, the next step would be to maybe add a bit more detail in the bump. Maybe there's a bit of roughness to the actual material. So what we can do is bring in the normal. So I'm going to drag that in and that's going to give us our texture. What I'm going to do first of all is just make sure that it's the same scale as the roughness. So we actually set that to two and we're going to plug this into a bump map. If I can type it right. There we go. And um, by the way, I'm pressing Shift C to bring up this little menu where I can type in the nodes. I just find it a bit quicker than going to the side here. Uh, so I'm going to plug that into the texture and plug the input into the material and overall and bump input. Okay, so a few things we need to do because it's given us some weird results. We need to enable the gamma override. That's just going to set it to the kind of same color profile that Redshift uses and then also set this to tangent space normal. So that tells Redshift that you're using a normal map. So you can see straight away, we're starting to make this texture more prominent in the knife. Uh, and it's actually adding some bump, like displacement to the material. Um, so what we're gonna do is just decrease this down. We don't need to be as drastic, maybe just something like 0 
and it's not going to make too much of a difference but it's just going to help to add a little bit more detail and roughness to the product itself. Okay so the next part we've got is that it's got this section here where the texture is like switched to upright so what we could do for that is come to our actual uh, object and we're going to have to add a cut through it. So we have to make this editable so I'm going to just create a duplicate and then drop that original in the archive uh, and just press C on this. Okay cool. So we could do this fairly simply. Um, what we would do is come to our top view. Uh, we're just going to make a line cut going through this object so I'm just going to select the object, right click and get a line cut. Um, we're just going to make sure that we do it on the edge here. Cool. And just click and drag until it connects to another point. So something like there. That should work. And now we have this cut going across the object. Obviously it's not perfect but um, you could finesse this to have it however you like and I'm going to select this, press V, select and set selection and we'll just call this bottom front and now if I was to duplicate our crow material I'm going to call this uh, upright, something like that drag this on and then use this selection tag we just made put it into the selection and now we've got a separate material just for this part of the object so if I was to go in and rotate this texture 90 degrees and then rotate the bump 90 degrees now you can see we've got a part of the model where the texture is going upright uh, obviously there's things we could do to make this more realistic you can see in the actual model there's like a bevel at this point probably because that's where the knife kinda goes inwards a little bit uh, I don't really want to focus on that just for now but that's the principle of how you would set up a separate material for that section uh, the final part would be this text here. Um, we could do a very, very quick UV unwrap. So what I would do for this is come into my top here, just like this. Um, go into the UV edit tool. Okay, what we're going to do is actually select the whole object, set the set UV from protection to frontal hit OK and now we've got the whole object just in this frontal position which is what, which is all we need because um, we're just trying to add detail to the front of this object uh, we're going to fit the, no what we're going to do is actually just scale it down and just move this into the center just like that and we're going to go file, new texture have it at 4k that's fine we'll just call this knife uh, 16 bit which is good for just adding more detail if you're in Photoshop or something uh, and that's cool and then we're going to go layer create UV mesh layer and then it's just a case of file save texture as PSD hit OK and then let's save this into where we're making this so here we should call this knife UV and just like that bish bash bosh it's saved Let's go in here, videos, makeover, open this knife UV, and then basically we can just create the texture in Photoshop. Okay, so I've opened up this file in Photoshop. Uh, all I'm going to do is type, get our text going on here. So we'll just call this uh, brushed steel, something like that. Let's get something maybe a bit more interesting increase the size drop this down to zero uh, that's good to me something like this that's good cool so we've got that there um, and all we're going to do is create a new layer fill that with black and then just change this text to white uh, like this and then just go file export as quick export as PNG I'm going to call this knife UF knife UV export 
and then we can just plug this into our texture. So the reason why we did black and white is because we're actually going to uh, use that as an alpha. So I'm going to create a texture, drop what we just made into here. So knife UV export. And if I just shift queued it, uh, hit play with our actual camera might help. Now we've got that brush steel text where we want it. Uh, we could probably drop it down a little bit if I was being really fussy, which I'm, I'm going to be fussy. Uh, like that. And just re-export this. Here we go. And it's good. And then just come into Redshift and just reload this image. Give it a minute to update. Maybe just press the refresh button. There we go, that looks better. Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do is create a new material and then we're gonna create a material blender. Okay, cool. So what we wanna do is basically have this one material, which is gonna be the text. We've got our brush steel material and then we wanna blend between the two. So if I just set this to like a, I don't know, just leave it as it is maybe for now and just drop it down to like a blackish color. And now we've got two materials. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna try to organize this a little bit so it makes more sense. We've got our brush steel material, this is gonna be our text material and then we've got this alpha mask here which is, we're gonna use to blend between the two. So. Let's plug this material into the base color of our material blender. So that's now the base material. And then we're going to drop this second material into layer one, layer color one. So if I plug this into the surface, uh, now we've got that basic material, we can't see any different. And that's because our layer one blend color is set to black. So if I set this to white, we're now just going to get that clear gray material that we had. Um, and this blend color is basically choosing how much we show of that layer one material. So if I set it to 50%, we're gonna get like a 50% between our base color and our layer one color. And what we actually wanna do is drive this using our material we just exported from Photoshop. So I'm gonna plug this into the layer blend color one and now you can see that this second material is only showing up using this uh, texture we just made in Photoshop. And that's because white is going to be visible and black is not going to be visible. So because we've only got white text, we're only seeing that material uh, where it's white on this alpha. So now we've got this nice um, brush steel text on our object and we could drop this down to something really dark like a 10% diffuse. Okay, so I think this is looking pretty good. I think the only final thing we could do just to kind of help give this the finishing touch is maybe if we just added that detail in to the difference in texture here. Okay, so I've got the line selected and I'm just going to right click and get the bevel tool and I'm just going to set this to 0 0.01 like this just so we get a tiny tiny little detail here. And now when we come back to the camera, you can see we get a nice split between this brush steel texture here and the upright one here. And there's a few things we could do to this. We could play with the color controls, um, just add a bit more contrast to this image, which is gonna help to really push the brush steel look. Uh, turn on photographic exposure, which is just gonna help to get real life camera settings in there. So we could tweak with these. Uh, having some photography knowledge is really gonna help with this. Uh, we can turn on bloom. It's just going to help to give some glow to these areas where you know you'd get really bright areas on the knife. Uh, same with streak. That's probably a bit too much though. Okay, cool. I'm probably going to bring a bit more contrast into this, something like that. Maybe drop the exposure down slightly. And at the moment, the only thing which is bugging me is the dome light. So this shadow is really, really harsh. So what we could do to fix that is um, 
just play with different angles on this dome light. What I'm going to do is just set this camera in place so I can't mess it up. And let's just hide that camera quickly again. And let's just play with this dome light quickly. So let's just try to get a nicer result. Uh, let's bring the shadows in a little bit. Something like this. Just so it's a bit more subtle. Um, so I started to really nitpick in this section here, which is why I've sped it up. Um, all I did really was move around the lights. Um, I've kept it on the screen instead of cutting out of the video just so you can see the placement of where I've put everything. But I pretty much just readjusted the position of the lights and got really picky about the scale of them, uh, whereabouts they were positioned, how high they were. Um, but nothing that you can't really get from what I've already talked about in this video. Um, anyway, the project file is going to be available to download, so you can actually download this project file for yourself and dig through it and kind of um, pick it apart. But I just wanted to talk over this part of the video as opposed to cutting it out because I thought maybe you guys would be interested in seeing how I rearranged uh, a few things. But yeah, I'm going to let this finish up and wrap up the video. Okay, so with a tiny bit more tweaking to the lighting, this is the final result of the makeover. If I was to compare this to the render that I got sent in, this is what we had and this is what we've ended up with. So we've done quite a few things in this project. Uh, we've tweaked the texturing, uh, kind of really finessed that brush steel and went over a few important nodes that we could use to kind of help to add to the realism of that brush steel texture. Uh, we talked about mixing textures together so that we could get that upright texture. Um, as well as just general kind of scene setup, making sure that objects are to life size scale. That's really going to help when it comes to lighting. Um, and yeah, we just covered a good range of topics. This again is the reference that we had. So if I was to uh, do, do a little side by side comparison, um, I think we got a pretty good end result. Obviously, you could tweak and finesse this uh, until your heart's content. Um, but I feel like with the time that we spent on this, we got a pretty good result. And what I'm going to do is actually send this project file back to the guy that sent it in so he can kind of dig it apart and um, have a look at it. And I'll check with him to see if it's okay for me to upload this for you guys to download as well. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. And if you want to see your render having a makeover in the next episode of this series, make sure to email in your project files to the email in the description down below. Uh, I'm going to be going through and seeing which ones I think would be helpful um, for you guys. So yeah, feel free to send those over. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you like the video. Hit the subscribe so you know when new content is on the way. And hit that notification bell so you know when I next upload. Alright, thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.